In this session, we will talk about how to create an AI version of you, exactly how to clone yourself with AI. And we are going to get into some really cool stuff that is really useful for creators, especially if you're creating online courses, you're generating leads for your website, for different products you're selling. And I have someone who is, is doing this a lot with her new company. Uh, Jody Cook is the founder of Coachbox AI. And I'm really excited to dive into this because this company does something that I think is extremely, extremely useful and makes it easy for creators to do this, which can be a little bit overwhelming to upload your knowledge base, chat with you know, yourself and like uh, expand yourself. Exactly. That's what we're going to get into here. So Jody, warm welcome. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more how you got into this world. I think this is just really interesting what you are doing with this. I, I know there's a lot of chatbot software and things like that. So maybe you can tell me how you got into this with AI and what you guys do differently. Yeah, sure. So if I take you first right back to November 2022, and that was when I first heard that ChatGPT had come out. So a good friend sent me a link and said, Oh my goodness, you need to see this. I think he described it as, it's like having a genius in your pocket. And yeah. I went on to this tool and I was like, didn't really know what to expect and typed a few things, saw the response and I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then one of the first things I did was I said to ChatGPT, hey, ChatGPT, because I didn't really know how to talk to it back then. And I think I said, please, can you? But I said, please, can you write me an article? With the title, and this was a title that was the name of an article I'd already written about four years before, and it was with the title, How to Raise Entrepreneurial Kids. And I said, can you include these subheadings? And I included the subheadings from the original article. And then I clicked enter and waited for a couple of seconds to see what would come out. And what came out was so unbelievably close to my original article that it was really scary. There were sentences in there that were the exact same sentence as what I'd used. It was the kind of same format because it had copied the, the headings that I'd asked it to. But I was looking at it being like, oh, these are my words. So then I was like, well, this is cool. Like at first I was quite impressed. And then I was like, hang on. So anyone else who typed in this exact sequence of words into ChatGPT could get out the article that uses my words, my sentences from what I've already written. Something's mm -hmm. not quite right about this. Mm -hmm. And so that day that I discovered ChatGPT, I think, I don't think I got dressed all day. I don't think I ate anything all day. I think it was just going down this rabbit hole and seeing what it was about. Mm -hmm. And just, I had this question in my head the whole time, how can I use this? And then about a few weeks later, I joined a mastermind for AI and it was a friend who had been running masterminds for years and years and he puts really cool groups of entrepreneurs together. And I joined this mastermind thinking that we were going to be talking about the really cool tools that we could build, the really cool AI tools that we could build and the businesses that we could start and how we could pivot our businesses to be AI businesses. Because I'd already bought coachfox.ai at this point. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to use this, but I think it's the future. We moved the .com to the .ai eventually. So you already, you already had this in mind. That's interesting. What the, do you already think about cloning yourself? There's different, we're going to get in, there's different ways. We are not talking exactly about creating your AI avatar, so to speak. Like you can, of course, have yourself I said, hey, I clone on video or your voice and things like that. This is more like uploading your knowledge, right? That's what you Uploading your knowledge about. and yeah. chatting to and fro. Yeah. And, and how, it, so how I first actually thought of it was in that mastermind because I was in a group of 12 creators who all created various different forms of content and they, their whole entire businesses were based on the content they created. And rather than them thinking as well, oh, which tools can we create? They were thinking, how do we protect ourselves from this? And they were really, really scared about it. And some of them had freelancers who they suspected were using ChatGPT to write articles. Some of them were like, no one's going to come to my site to find their Spanish food recipes when they can just go to ChatGPT and ask it. And they were really, really scared. And so what, what I did with my company at the time, because it was called coachbox.com, it was originally a platform for business coaching by voice note. And I just mm. completely reimagined it from scratch. So. It's a first principles way of thinking where you think about what your business does in one simple line. And ours was we help entrepreneurs succeed 
faster with better guidance. Mm. And then you think about how that can be delivered, not in the way that you're already delivering it, but from scratch, like using AI or in the most effective, efficient possible way. And so for us, we thought that AI integration with our platform was somewhere in the future. It was like when flying cars are around, we think it's going to be like five to 10 years. We thought that was going to be the same thing. And we were all excited about creating these kind of AI coaching resources that could help coaches coach better. But mm. then when I realized what ChatGPT could do and how we could integrate that and how we could do lots more with that, that's when we thought we don't need to create things that can help coaches coach better. We can create AI coaches. And so that's what we started doing, just messing around. I found some people on Upwork. I found a, a friend. I asked around, like, who knows about this stuff? And then eventually we found a development partner who could build us a prototype and then build us out the platform that we have right now. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, let's get into some use cases of this. I think there's so, I mean, you mentioned a few in the beginning, but what's some things you can do with this? The opportunities are really endless, right? What's some things you have seen because you have worked with some creators, of course, they have courses, they might do other things like coaching, stuff like that. So right at the start, before we actually built it out into the pla a platform, we created Jody AI that was based on my books and articles and things I've written because we wanted to make sure that we could actually make something that was really useful before we built it mm -hmm. into a platform that other people could use. So it's, and, and I mean, how creators now use the platform is very similar to how we train Jody AI. So it mm -hmm. take everything that you've got, all your articles, books, blog posts, tweets, FAQs, the about page on your website, everything that you've got and upload it to our system and basically train an AI version of you that can engage with your audience on whatever basis, using whatever style you want it to. So um, I'll show you around the platform in mm -hmm. a sec, but we've got three main use cases for how people are using it. And the first is that when they create their AI version, they get an embed code that they then put onto their website or somewhere, some kind of uh, public facing site that they have. And that AI version of them collects names and email addresses. So it essentially acts as a lead magnet, but we kind of think it's the ultimate lead magnet because not only is it newsworthy, like your a random PDF document that you might create as a lead magnet is not newsworthy. No one cares. Mm -hmm. But an AI version of you is incredibly newsworthy. You can get press and you can get exposure for it um, and it can go further just because it's so exciting. Would you put some, I guess, I guess a question on this, would you put something like that as a chat on your website, like just as a, on the website, not before they opt in, just to kind of like give information or is that, would you have that after they opt into something? The opt-in is built into our interface. Oh, really? Okay, so interesting. So someone enters their name and email address in order to start chatting with the AI version of you. So okay, it so it's like, a lead mag it's like a lead gen as well. So you have built that in. So basically you, you could integrate it to your favorite email provider or something like that, I assume, or like connect it in some way. Yeah, exactly. And in the Coachbox AI system, you can see all the leads that you've got. You can see their email addresses. You can see summaries and transcripts of all the conversations they've had. So you know their exact problems as well. And they're talking to the AI version of you and based on the things that you can help them with and it's answering based on your content. So it very much is mm. like having a conversation with you, which is pretty Yeah. Cool. So, so the difference is really that if you go into ChatGPT or something, it's like infinite. They, can, they have like all the answers that's on the web, right? And they might not get the right, if they ask something, hey, who is Navid or something, they probably know who's Elon Musk or like the famous people a lot. They can give a lot of good answers, but for other people, it's not always that accurate. So I yeah. think it's better to just have a limited knowledge where you have uploaded exactly like your site. I don't know if you can upload your site map, if you have a WordPress, I've seen that some tools, you can upload every page like in at once, basically, if you want to have your entire website, and then you can just have that knowledge on this platform to just chat with it and just have. And also, yeah, I guess you can set the questions as well, or, or like some pre-questions as well. So you can have some suggestions for people to ask you. Yeah. And what, what you said there is really, is a, a really important part of it because in that mastermind, when those creators were worried, they actually didn't need to be worried as long as they did something with it because their audience don't want to hear from just the generic internet advice on how you should market your business. They want to hear from you as a specific expert yeah. in your field, person who they've been hearing from for years and years and years. It's like creators who've already been making content, building an audience, they're just positioned so perfectly to capitalize on this stuff because mm -hmm. 
people want to hear from them. So the lead magnet side, the lead magnet use case is about 50% of the people oh. using Coach That's AI. awesome, actually, because I haven't seen that use. I have, I've seen a lot of tools. There's so many AI tools, right? But I haven't seen too many, like, focus exactly on the lead gen part of this. Like, they have maybe used it in the in a membership or something like that. So you just yeah. have a chat or... Because it is great also for getting reducing customer support and things like that. If you do have it in a membership, I think. Yeah. And I, I don't think you guys exactly focus on AI powered customer support, but this can focus on a, the education part of this side, like to actually give more information. That you don't need to answer the same questions over and over again to your customers if you have it, and you can upload your course content or something like that. I could see that working really well with something like this. Yeah, that's exactly right for the the second use case is people using it as a value add to existing members mm -hmm. or existing clients. So one of our creators, she's called Rose, she helps female entrepreneurs make their first million and she okay. created Rosebot and it's mm -hmm. in a private Facebook group that just her group coaching clients and they ask it questions and they talk to it about their business plans, their marketing plans when she's asleep and she can't help them. And it answers questions that she would have asked. And it's all trained on the content that's in her courses and in her teaching. This, that's interesting because also like you, you, they might be intimidated to ask some questions to the actual teacher, right? I've, yeah. I've heard someone else say this. They had like an AI clone that like called people. They were doing like outbound and things like that. So they had someone call. It was, it's a little different, but they, they still, the, the people said they preferred speaking to the AI over her, over her, basically the founder of the company, because they don't feel as intimidated. You know, they can ask whatever they want and they can like, you know, more relaxed because they're just talking to like a robot basically, but it's <laughs> like yeah, the clone, it's, it's the clone of you essentially. That's what is really cool. But I think there's a big, no fear, no fear of judgment is a big thing. So you uh -huh. might speak to, you might confide in an AI coach more than you would confide in a real person because you can get answers without worrying about what they're going to think of you. But for Rose's clients, especially, it's that all around the clock access that they just really love. And they also, it's very, it's, it's not only is it efficient because you can do it anytime, but it's also, they don't need to bother with the niceties. If they were in a conversation with Rose, they'd be like, well, how are you? How's your week been? You know, how are you enjoying Lisbon? And then, but they don't need to do that when they're talking to the AI version of her. They just say, hey, I've got this campaign coming up. What should I do? Give me, how should I format my headline? And if they asked ChatGPT how to format their headline, they would get that kind of generic advice. But they're getting advice based on Rose's frameworks. And mm -hmm. that's what they signed up with. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like the, the, like your framework in the program and things like that. I think that is really valuable. And then if you have a help desk or something like that, I'm not sure if that's a use case you've seen some of your the customers use it for. But like also if you have a help desk with all the commonly asked questions about your yeah. how to access things and things like that. You can also put that there, I guess. I don't know if you've seen that as well. So. Yeah, training, a big part of training data is, is FAQs. And if, mm -hmm. if you are a creator who already knows what people are going to ask you, then perfect, because you train it with that. They ask slightly different stuff. They want working through problems in a slightly different way. But the AI model that you train within Coachbox AI knows how you would, knows roughly how you would answer. And so it can take clients along the same process. Mm -hmm. And so the third use case, I think, is the most interesting because we okay. didn't think it would be this big, but it's creators who are charging for access to an AI version of them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So they're charging. I've seen the lowest I've seen is $7 a month. The highest I've seen is $10 a month. So somewhere between 7 and $10 a month, but to hundreds or thousands of people who want to hear from them and will pay for the privilege. And we've got two creators in particular who are really doing well at this and one is a marketing coach who has a really popular podcast and trains people on how to use Facebook ads. And you, we've got another one who's a relationship coach. And so people are getting relationship advice as often as they need all around the clock from this person's AI based on their specific frameworks, knowledge, experience. So that's so amazing because you can do this like a recurring income and they're getting access because of course, if they want to have personal access to the trainer or the, the expert will cost a lot more. So yeah. they, I'm sure people get that seven to $10 and they has just uploaded like all his knowledge basically mm -hmm. into that. I don't know. You can show, showcase this a little bit, like how that would work. What would you upload? Would you limit it or because otherwise you could, could you set also, you know, t tell it to not answer, answer in a specific way too, or is it just based on the knowledge you upload? I'm not sure if you can have restrictions. So what's quite interesting 
And especially when you think about an AI version of you compared to a book that you wrote or a course that you wrote, is that if someone reads your book, they have to think about how it applies to them. And if someone Mm. watches your course, you might have exercises, you might have prompts that you're going to, questions that they need to ask, but they still have to think to do that. Whereas an AI coach version of you makes it all about them. So it's not Mm. just, let's read this book on the 10 commandments of marriage. It's, well, what are your rules for marriage? What do you think? What do you think you should do? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? It very much makes it like a coaching session, but with an AI. And I think that's so much more engaging for an audience member because they don't have to think. They can just get the insights from nowhere. No, I, I, I feel this is I feel this is how you do things a little bit differently. You can tell, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think like you focus on the more the coaching side. I think other tools might be like a chat or they are more maybe more general. I don't know. But uh, do you do you have you seen like what is your main differentiator, would you say, compared to let's say other tools? What is setting yourself apart? I would say with the with the creators of Coach Box AI, they want their audience to be the center of everything. They want it to be all about them. They're not, they don't necessarily want to just clone themselves so that other people can just consume their content. They want to consume, they want to clone themselves to give other people this amazing experience that's yeah. closer to what would be, it, it, what it would be like having a session with this person or talking to this person. Um, um, I think they, a lot of them love the idea of reaching more people without spending any more time doing so because they're, they're busy people one of our first of creators is a she's an astrologer and she's really she's a very prominent figure in the astrology world and she just has not got enough hours in the day to help people enough because everyone wants her help she's got a really big profile but with an ai version of her she can just help an infinite number of people like one of our slogans is scale yourself to infinity Uh, That's awesome. And I think if you have a book as an author or something like that, it's like amazing to offer as part, maybe you have a bundle or something like that for the book. You can offer like an AI version of you and actually upload the book into that or like similar. So they can ask questions based on the book. That can be a bonus, for example, similar or an extra thing, an add on or whatever. It can be, it could be an add on to a program you're selling. Hey, you want access to me and you can add it on. Like I could see. A lot of use cases for that, similar to how what you said, some people are charging 7 to $10 a month for mm-hmm. access to this. That can be like an add-on to any program you have or a book or anything you offer to add a little bit of an extra revenue stream because this is something a lot of people can sign up for. It's pretty affordable, right? Yeah. In the last book I wrote, it came with a companion course. But any book I write in the future, it's going to say, talk to my book. Here's how you can meet Jody AI and you can get coached through anything in this book. Just if you imagine if you someone reads your book and you know that they really like chapter three, the whole of chapter three is going to be in your AI. So they can just say, hey, talk me through the stuff in chapter three. I want to explore this a bit more. And then, and then exactly. they can do that. So int- I feel like not, at least at the time we are recording this, I haven't seen too many authors use it yet. I think that's going to be more popular as more people explore this. I don't know, you, you're probably more into this because you have like checked, maybe you have some clients that are authors and they're using it for this. But I, I haven't personally seen like famous authors just start using it. Yeah. Like in this way, but I think that's just gonna take things to another level for them. It's like a personal connection right off the bat, and it's kind of like similar to I, I don't know if you listened to one of Gary Vee's audio books. He's you know he's really successful, but you can feel like he's adding on to the book. Basically, it's different than you're reading the book. So I think that could be even more personal when you are actually having this clone version. You can just ask questions based on the book, and you get the answers from your cell, your the avatar of you, basically, which is yeah. really cool. So we've definitely got a lot of authors. I've just um, found the list, but an AI astrologer, nutritionist, sales coach, writing coach, fitness coach, okay. running coach, property advisor, presenting coach, oh. productivity coach, entrepreneur coach, marriage counselor, CEO and podcast host, yeah. or a storybook character. That's quite a oh, quite That's a interesting. One. I mean, it looks like this works for anyone, basically. You can do be in any niche, any market. You can just, if you're teaching something or have some kind of knowledge, you can use this. Why don't we get into showcasing a little bit how you set this up? I think that's like, how, how do you actually do this? And what should you put in there? What, how should you actually make this work for yourself? Yeah, sure. So can I share screen with you? Perfect. Coach okay. what's AI. So that's I'm going to show you Jody AI and just show you how it works. So this is what it looks like when you first log in. And so this is how someone would set the name of their AI, change the font, sorry, change the colors to match their brand and change the font, 
upload their avatar and then this is what their chat looks like. They can embed using the embed code and they can decide what data they want to collect. Before. And you created like an AI version of yourself, like a <laughs> like an AI, basically. This, how did you create this like image? I think you... I, yeah, I use an app to do this. I think I use... There's um, a lot of them. I, I also I have some, but I'm just curious what you use. And that's, yeah, and it's quite, I think I used, I can't remember what it's called, but it's one of the tools that Peter Levels created. I think I went on that and paid $40 oh, to get Peter a load Lola, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know him, this, the, I know him, like the uh, digital, digital nomad, right? He's yeah, like he's so really, really big on the nomad list and these things, right? He's creating a lot of companies like that. He's one of my favorite creators because I first joined nomad list when it, almost when it very first started, I think I was one of the first hundred people on nomad list, but since then I've just kept it with her, his journey yeah, and this. he builds cool stuff and he builds it in public. And that's very yeah, cool. Yeah, he, and he so, shares the revenue. I think he had like a photo app for AI. Maybe that's this one. I'm not sure. There's there's a few he's building right now. He's just sharing them basically on. Yeah. I think he's very active on Twitter. So I, I'll, I'll link that up if someone wants to yeah, check him out. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, but I'm also, I'm I guess fan. we have this in common as well. I guess you're traveling and living in different places if you're like following him quite a bit. Yes. That's exactly. cool. Awesome. So this is where you customize everything. And this is where you create the chat ready to put on your website and you nice. the embed code. Up here in the top right, so we've got this client. I'm not going to click on it because there's going to be a bunch of email addresses that I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I shouldn't share. But when you click on clients, that's where we've got the name and the email address of everyone who your AI talks to. And then we've also got the summaries of all the conversations and the transcripts as well. So it's yeah. where you can keep you can just keep an eye on what people are talking about. You can find out their problems and then you can use that to either approach, you know, approach them, talk to them and say, Hey, you're having this, you, I know you're having this issue and I'd like to, I can talk to you more about it. Um, and another thing that you can do is you can find what your AI has talked to them about and you can use those kind of question and answer pairings to train your AI further so that it keeps on getting better over time. And probably worth mentioning as well that when your clients do talk to your AI, they know that all this information is shared. They know that you'll be able to see everything um, that they do. You have say. Do you have any fallback back live thing? If you, let's say someone is getting stuck with, they have a question, it's not answered there. Do you have something so you get a notification that, okay, I, I don't, the AI doesn't know this answer because maybe it's not uploaded. So you nice. can actually... I don't know if that's a feature or that's something yeah, that you... Yeah, potentially. Potentially in the future, there yeah. are things that the creators will put in to say, now's where you should book a call or now's where you should see if you can buy a course or book a session. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, if you don't have an answer, they can like book a strategy session. Maybe you can sell them on like a, your coaching program in that case, that which is more advanced. Or I could see use cases like that as well, where you upsell people if they... Because they, it, it's not infinite, like the answers. It's going to be a limit to some extent. Maybe one of your students or a client has questions that's not in there and then yeah. getting, they are getting stuck. So maybe then you can have, okay, sorry, I don't yeah, know this answer. Yeah. I don't know this yet, or I haven't uploaded this to the database or something like that. I don't yeah. know what you've seen because what do you see from other people, their feedback to this, if someone is getting to that stage where they don't get an answer from, from this AI bot or the clone of yourself? What they, what our creators want to do is either train it so it can take care of absolutely all conversations yeah. or they want to be able to share a link that, that that will then say, okay, book a discovery call or book in for a session and it's paid, okay. it's a paid session. It very much depends on the use case because you think we've got 50% of our people using it as a lead magnet. So then yes, they might want to book people yeah. in further if they offer that. But then the others, they want, to, they want it to add value to members or they want to charge for access. So for these people, they want it to add value just in itself. It doesn't matter where it's sending people. So it, it differs between creators. Yeah. When you're saying training this AI, how, how do you do it? Uploading more things or just giving more instructions or based on all the questions you're getting, it's like getting better or what? Yeah, let me show you because down the left-hand side, these are our six training rooms. Okay, so very, very cool. I think that's I haven't one, seen too much uh, for other tools either. The first one that someone enters is where you tell the AI who you are. So you summarize who you are as a professional and then that helps the AI see from your perspective. And then you would describe your approach to helping people. So here's mine. I always ask questions to dig deeper, further the conversation. I help entrepreneurs find perspective, reframe challenges, become a sounding board to their ideas. I challenge their thinking and their limiting beliefs and remind them of their mission. So if you were an AI, how would you want them to talk to people? And we've seen creators ask their audience. We've seen them say, how would you describe my approach? How would you describe what I do and my personality and my tone of voice to help them fill out these? And because then they can use their social media 
as a way to co-create with their audience. So they're kind of training this AI and their audience is getting really excited about whenever it launches. Yeah, this is cool. I think this is, I like this, that you can personalize. This is a... Uh pretty good because otherwise also like it gets better as you said with time and where yeah. do you upload your information uh, and what would you upload would you just let's you can upload your entire let's say you have a blog or a podcast you can upload everything or what do you see people are doing what do they usually upload to to so then have show, this knowledge space so let me just show you this bit first because this is where yeah. you in a really easy way you slide the side as a crossing can you see on the right hand side it changes yeah, yeah. To this this is really cool i think that you can coaching and and you can change the type of kind of style and tone you want it to have but on the left hand side in here we've got expertise and knowledge base mm -hmm. and this right here is where you would upload your content so you click here to upload and then what it does is it turns it into what we are calling prompt and completions once our system has gone through your content you can click view that will that will turn purple and then you can see all your prompts and completions okay here. So this is where we've got like someone's entire information. And so this is, there's a lot of information in here. We always say we recommend a minimum of 200, but for someone who's got a lot of content, it would be fairly straightforward. Could you, for example, upload like a site, like say you have a WordPress idea, you know, WordPress has sitemaps. Could you upload, can you just link the sitemap and like, in the, the basically, you know, scans that like, that would be a cool feature because then yeah. you like upload hundreds of pages or something like that. If you wanted to have your entire website, like more or hundred plus pages, imagine. <laughs> yeah. That would be a I mean, cool one. Not yet, but we're building stuff all the time. Yeah, we, of course. It's like probably when you might be seeing this, maybe she has a lot more features. And yeah. But for now, you need to upload. So let's say you have PDFs and things like that. Maybe you have, I don't know, could you have videos as well to put there? I'm not sure. Again, not yet, but we're building stuff all the time. Mainly, it's text-based content is the best. So for mm. our creators who've got videos or podcasts, they are sending us the, tra they, they are yeah. uploading the transcripts. It's easy um, enough, right? It's just like to, you know, if you have videos on YouTube, you can go to youtubetranscript.com, get the transcript, just like get that. So it's pretty straightforward anyway. And maybe that's more accurate. So it's pretty good. Anyway, there's a chat, so it's going to be text based anyway. Yeah, it is. But you want to think a lot about, let's talk about this after. Actually. Let me yeah, show yeah. you this section and then I'll tell you more about the kind of theory. Yeah. So the most, I think the most fun bit of this, what we call fine tuning and feedback. And this is where you ask your audience questions that your audience you ask your AI questions that your audience will likely ask you. So we would go in and say, can you help me with my business or whatever you think your audience are going to say. And what the AI would come out with is what it would come out with to a member of your audience. So this is where... Just this ask is not the Yodi, Yodi bot what it, she thinks about the future of AI or something like that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll try that one next. But so yeah. what comes out is the AI answers and you as the creator would say, okay, is that in line with what I would say or would I phrase that slightly differently? If you're not happy, you would click on like a few number of stars and then you could edit and then click the tick. But if you're completely happy, you can click the five star. I love that and you can edit the answers like that and then say, I'm not completely happy with it. Please reiterate or fine tune this. That's great, actually. And then that goes to the knowledge base and that is stored as the answer so that next time it knows how to answer that, mm. roughly that type of question. And then I'll ask you, what do you think of the future? <laughs> yeah. I haven't trained it on this, but yeah, we'll see we'll what see, comes we'll out. It, sh it should come out with something that's based on all the content I've uploaded, it knows my world view. It knows what I've written about before. So, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely thinking about it right now. Let's see what it says. And um, one of the interesting things about this program. Oh, here we go. We like to see AI becoming more integrated into our daily lives. Personalized AI coaches. Hey. I think it's not bad. This is probably quite in line with when we spoke earlier about the potential of AI for creators and how if it's used creatively to solve real world problems that is where the magic happens so yeah i'd say that was pretty similar i could see this is the step this is like something that you can implement right now of course there are like clones of yourself where you can see yourself speaking and things like that that already exists but i think as accessible it's not for everyone depends if you're going to have a lot of knowledge it's going to cost you a lot more money to have you on video but i think that's going to be something for maybe the future that you actually can see yourself like in this chat you come up <laughs> yes. and yeah, you. yeah 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 Yes. I do think that's like an evolution of this and that's going to be more accessible in the future, actually. I do think that. Yeah, um, I think so. And if you notice here as well, at the end of this, we've got what are your thoughts on the future of AI? Because the point of our platform is it's not about 
it's not about me as an AI coach and what I know and my knowledge. It's more about, well, how are you going to do it? And so that's why it's asking the question. So now what's going to happen is this user, which is me at the moment, but would be someone in my audience, is going to get taken through how they could explore AI within their business. And that's exactly the point of our tool. Yeah, it's, it's like a coaching, them. a little bit of a mini coaching session. That's nice, actually. So yeah, exactly. getting like value. Nice. So I think, uh, am I back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so when we were talking earlier about how to train the AI, one thing that creators often come to us and the, the kind of question they're, at, they're asking is, how do I turn my content into an AI coach? And what we say is that's the wrong way of thinking about it. Think about it in terms of how can an AI version of me best benefit my clients or what are my audience looking for in an AI coach? And once you think about it that way around, it becomes less about your content and more about providing really great guidance, frameworks, advice to the things that people are about to ask. So in when we very first launched Coach Fox a couple of months ago, we had a done with you kind of cohort of our first 20 creators. And what we encouraged each of them to do was to go on to chat GPT and say, tell me the kind of most popular 100 questions that someone would ask A, and then we got them to put their own job title in there because we wanted to get them thinking around the benefit to their audience, not just how they fudge their content into a bot. And yeah. we also got them to do things like ask their audience. So to say, I'm creating an AI coach version of me, what would you ask it? And to train it on that stuff. And once you go back to basics with it, it becomes very straightforward to train it because you're no longer thinking about how do I turn my exact content into robot training content, but you're thinking, how do I add the most value? And it's, it, it creates a very good AI version of you very, very quickly. Yeah, I can also see this working for beginning uh, p creators as you're starting out, like, because they can go to ChatGPT and ask it, what's the most common questions for this topic or something like that. And they can create like a clone of themselves pretty quickly, right? They might have some knowledge, but they don't know exactly. They haven't, they maybe don't have a coaching programs or too many courses yet. So they want to learn more about their market. I think this can be a fantastic way to actually do this as a, maybe a lead gen, as you mentioned, and yeah. then have that there and then just getting questions and then seeing what works. And that can also be a great way to do market research. Actually seeing what comes up over and over again, and then you can create courses or programs or education about this for your market. I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a yeah. pretty unique use case as well, because yeah. honestly, that's normally would happen to surveys and things like that. Now you can kind of speed up this workflow. Maybe you have a bigger following on social media, but you want to bring them more to your website and build up this email list so you can actually sell more of your stuff. So mm. I don't know if you see people also using it for this. Mm, yeah. And yeah, there was one creator in particular who built an AI running coach pretty much from scratch from not very much content at all that they had, but they had an ethos. So they were able to answer the top 200 questions that someone might ask a running coach purely with their ethos because the AI learned how to do that. And what you were saying just now about being able to find out exactly what your audience wants and then create more stuff based on that, that, that goes back to the thing at the start. It's like if AI, if, if chat GPT and if large language models are going to steal our content, and repurpose it for other people. It's like, how do we own our content? And we own it by someone knowing firstly that it's our content, our audience being able to access it, knowing that it's us. And then they, and then want them wanting to keep coming back to it because they're going to keep getting more value because yeah. the tool is going to get better with how much they talk to it. Or you as a creator are going to create more content based on what you know your audience wants. So it's like a tool to be able to rise to the top and not become irrelevant by just whatever AI tools are out there, like you become the AI tool. No, I, I love that because also when you're, when let's say you have your own proprietary system or something like that for a course, and then you, if you upload that to ChatGPT or something like that, it's not always the best because then other people, it's, <laughs> you can, they can get access as well and all these kind of stuff, they learn about it. But if you have that in a closed system, it's a lot better, I think. Of course, they're for bigger companies. They have ChatGPT, they have enterprise level with OpenAI and things like that, but that's not to the public really. It's they have just a regular plan. And I think for this, they learn about it. And if they learn something that can be available to pretty much anyone, right? So you need to be a little bit careful what you what you put there. But in in a system like a closed system like Coachbox AI, you basically upload your stuff. So it's more safeguarded, I guess. Like you you upload your full course content in there. 
and it's there. No one else can access it. I think that's how it yeah. works, if I understand it correctly. Yeah, exactly. We are we have we use OpenAI um, in the tool, but we have very very separate databases. That's where our yeah, I guess you're using the API, stored. right? Like the most people, like you're pulling from that, but still you're you're feeding the information. It has restrictions. That's what we mentioned. Like the so you, they can only answer questions based on this and what they are learning about you. I guess that's how how it works. So they cannot like it <laughs> random questions about. If they ask about, hey, what's the weather? I don't know. I probably wouldn't answer that, right? Because that's not something you uploaded. That's actually a setting. So that's in training room three. And oh, really? You can choose. So you can choose whether you want it to just be based on only your content. So for example, I mentioned the, the lady who's got the Spanish recipe site. So imagine if someone went on and said, hey, can I have a recipe for a Spanish omelette? And she said, yeah, I've got this fantastic one. It's my, it's my grandma's <laughs> recipe and shares it. Imagine if someone asked for a paella recipe paella recipe so would she want if she didn't have one of those would she want her ai version to make it up or would she want to say sorry i don't have one of those let me give you this other recipe well, instead this is actually really cool this is what i meant before when i said what happens if they don't know the answer or they don't yeah. have like your answer right so yeah. then you say i don't have yeah this is a great way to phrase it as well so it doesn't sound like hey this is something i just made made up right off the bat no but you're saying like i don't have this in the database kind of is what you're saying, but I can send you this. And that's from the worldly knowledge that yeah. ChatGPT would have, right? We that's... also, I might share my screen again, actually, yeah, so I can show cool. you. So in, um, well, actually, firstly, in conversational flow, this is where you can train your AI on the different types of greetings that you would use. So my mind says, oh, hey there, because that's yeah. probably what I say in real life. And then different sign-offs, different starters. And but you can call them by name when you have the email or if they are in the membership, can you call them by name as well? Yes, it will use their name. Okay, sure. very nice. And then in the starters, we've got how does how do you want your AI to react to good news, bad news, or neutral news? And you know what, this one, FFS, we put this in there as a placeholder kind of joke and then it got somehow made it into the final platform. Oh and my it's God. really funny when that's ticked and when you'll give some bad news to the AI and it comes back with that. <laughs> but yeah, you can use stuff that you would use in real life and you can ask your clients to say, okay, what do you, how do I respond to news? What do you think of when you think about having a conversation with me? And then down here, we've got the types of things that your AI is going to say before it asks a question or before it gives a statement because we want it to sound like you because what we want to happen in the first few interactions, we want your audience member to be like, oh yeah, I could believe this is them. Because then they're brought in and then they're ready to carry on talking to it and to get value from it. So mm. this part's really important. But what we yeah. were just talking about is training room three in framing and onboarding. And so firstly, there's a question around how much you want your AI to dig deep compared to surface level. So going back to the example of the Spanish recipe site, what if someone asks for a recipe for a Spanish omelette? Do you want your AI to say, sure, here you go. I just have it. Or do you want it to say, oh, Spanish omelette, you sure you want that? Like you had one of those yesterday. Do you want it today? Is there a hidden meaning here? So you've got like a digging deeper to taking stuff at surface level. And then after that, this is that question. So do you want it to use only your content or do you want it to use the collective knowledge of the internet? And not only that, but if you want it to use only your content or if you want it to be down the left-hand side of the scale, then you need to add let down information. So this is what your AI is going to say when you can't or won't talk about a specific topic, because it might not be that you don't have the information. It might be that they've asked you some kind of personal question, like, are you religious? Where do you live? And you don't want to tell them. So you need to ask, you need to find a way of saying that as well. Jody AI actually got pretty sassy. There was a friend who typed in, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? And Jodie AI said, let's get back to business, shall we? Let's let, tell me about your business challenge because she just didn't want to talk about ice cream flavors. So you could train your AI to talk and not talk about any topic whatsoever. No, I love this. It's, like, it's really good. It's actually it's like you can do it in a funny way as well. You can set like a little bit of restrictions or you can tell them to, to use some other ChatGPT knowledge. But I don't know about you, like when you're going to ChatGPT and talking about the personalization you do, this is like this is like you basically. If you're going into gonna create any form of content, it takes more time there. Even personalizing this, I, I mean, you can do it more in an authentic way, but this is just in 
such an easy way to give like your customer something really of value. And it's like exactly like you to create a blog post and let's say ChatGPT, like sounding like you is more difficult, at least like without a lot of fine tuning and reiteration takes a lot yeah. more time. And this one is just like you upload your existing knowledge. It's like already there more or less you might and you can also fine tune it and make it better which is pretty awesome i think this yeah. is a cool i mean i think this is the future like and this is here now but i think like more in the future even with with like uh, maybe the audio as, as the voice cloning is something now with 11 laps and hey jen and things like that you can do it that would be also cool like the answers like it's your voice that they can actually get an audio version i don't know if you yeah. thought about that as well because you have already the chat platform that could be something for the future too, to just add that on, because imagine hearing yourself, it's even more personal. Yeah, for sure. It's all in, it's all in the roadmap. It's awesome. all in progress. You know, the tough thing is working out, what are we building because our creators really want it? And what are we building because it just sounds cool? And that's probably my biggest challenge as the founder of this business to figure out what we should build first. But yeah. There's... Without saying too much, like because the, 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 I don't know when people would be watching this, but what's some things you you're, you would be excited about to integrate to the platform? The So the amount of integrations that we have on the cards with where you could put your Coachbox AI and what tasks it could do for you and how it could add value to your audience in all the different places of their lives. Like how can you how can we put like a nutrition coach in the fridge of its of an audience member? Or how can we put like a business coach like right there next to you at your laptop the whole time? It's like, it's thinking about how our AI coaches can be so intertwined in the lives of their clients that I think is really exciting. You, know, you could have an app version. Like imagine like having an app version, people will download it. It's just yeah, just you can do, your, yeah. yeah, well, that's possible right now. We've got our creators who are creating the AI version of them putting it in a chat screen and telling their audience how to add it as a as an app on their home screen so that it's all the time there. Okay. And that's what Ro I mentioned Rose earlier, but her members have got that on their home feed as well. So it's like she's only ever one button away, which is exactly what they want. So you just think of how like intertwined you can be in their lives. And I think about this a lot with the the mentors that some of the mentors that kind of inspire me and it's like you almost want them to move in with you just so that you constantly hear their methods their ways of working and you can just be them and so yeah we're using that as inspiration for how we do this with our coach what they are i'm just really really excited about this because i feel like with email marketing has been around for ages and i think that's you know of course it's still a really good way to communicate and that's how we make a lot of sales but like Still, it's so much competition in the email inbox now. It's, you know, everywhere, right? So if you have your, if you have an app or something like a chat on the home screen of your phone, which you use your phone every single day, you're always there. They always are reminding about your message as a yeah. coach or creator or whatever that is. And you just, <laughs> they can just chat to you basically, like basically almost like a WhatsApp chat, like it's your best friend or something like that. It's and you're pretty not, incredible. And you're not there. You don't know it's happening. It's just taking yeah. place and you're doing your work. But you're meeting all these people who yeah. are building such familiarity with you. Um, and then, yeah, there's, there's kind of no limits on what you can achieve. Yeah, the, li the lifetime value of the customer is just going to shoot through the roof, I think, because you're like always there. Whether that's like a free legion or like you do it, as you mentioned, like for a book or for a membership or something like that, when they get access, I think it's just going to lead to people wanting more from you because they, they always have the access. So it's yeah. pretty cool. But I think, yeah, what I do think you people want heroes they want the person who they say no i'm i am proud to follow this person i'm mm -hmm. proud that i live by their ethos i abide by their rules i get help from them on my business challenges i think people want that and i think that right. creators are set up so perfectly to be those people because you always you already see it like lots of people they won't necessarily just buy what's advertised to them they'll buy what an influencer tells them to buy and it's exactly the same, but with creators who've owned their space and who've got all this content on this one specific area, this is how you do a lot more with it. You know, another use case I just thought of because I've done a lot of like affiliate marketing. I think for this, it would be really amazing for product recommendations. I think like putting this on your site or let's say you have, it's almost like a quiz a little bit. I mean, there's quiz software and things like that. You can do, Hey, what's your what's the best email marketing software? What's the best AI tools for creators doing podcasting or something like that, right? So yeah. I will have like, 
And you you can have a quiz going through this, but you can also have yourself there chatting to you. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Navid, what's the what's the best uh, software to use for email marketing? I could see this being amazing based on the situation. Maybe I have uploaded based on their situation. So mm -hmm. they don't even need to go through this like quiz. It's more like they're chatting to me. It's like yeah. we are having a coaching session as I'm giving personal recommendations. I think that yeah. will convert better, actually. And, and then you share affiliate links and then they Yeah, of course, like based themselves. on their answer, I could share a link. I guess that's your, your tool could also work like that. Based yeah. on the answer, I might share, okay, based on this answer, I will have, have this response, right? Yeah. I will like, get, get something like, because you could even tweak the responses I saw in your tool. So yes. it's pretty awesome. I think this is a, I, I don't know if you've had someone using it for this, but I would, that's probably one of the use cases how I would personally use it at least. Nice. I don't know that we have, but yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. As I said, the opportunities are endless, but any mistakes you have seen, like people are getting started with uh, creating a clone of themselves, anything you would be, you would advise people to be wary of? I think with lots of different AI tools, it's like garbage in, garbage out. So it's going to be as good as the content you're feeding it. And so one mistake I've seen is people not properly thinking about what they're putting in before they do put it in. And often transcripts of podcast episodes or transcripts of just chats pretty much don't always work that well because you think someone asks a question, someone gives a response, but they don't just give the response in a soundbite, beautifully formatted story. They say, oh, hey, there's that thing and let me go back to the start and there's this. And how that translates into AI training data is just a bit not that tidy. So it's always worth looking at what you're putting in first and seeing if you can clean it somehow and even use chat gpt or use claude to clean it summarize it okay then, then interesting it in that's actually a good tip because i would say let's say you're a podcast or a youtuber you just upload a transcript it's not that efficient so better to go first it, it's really easy to summarize you can i even use some plugin for chat gpt mock script i can just even put the link in it's uh -huh, just an amazing uh -huh. job to summarize like an hour long video or whatever it is or you can even upload a transcript now or pdf directly into that and yeah. Claude of course is longer more more tokens so you can do very long text and things like that yeah. but so we that, that works good... better just having a set of summaries instead of like the transcript if you have pod if you have like 50 podcasts and you want to train your AI for this just bas basically just having a, a summary for each episode is, is going to be better than just having all of the episodes so it's more that you what you want is the actual question answer pairings of each episode We've got guidance on our site. It's coachfox.ai, but forward slash training hyphen guidance is mm. the guidance that we take creators through to help them create a, an amazing AI version of themselves. And I guess if you think about it, it's like writing a book. Like it's a, quite a big task to start with, but once it's done, it's done forever. And then it never gets old and, and it only requires tweaks from there. So we are very much, this is how you do it. And one of the things that we provide in there is prompts. So if you have got some kind of, messy content that you know has got gems and nuggets in there but it's not right in the format it's in right now that's where we would provide a prompt to say put this into claude and use what's that an to example generate of some this stuff. what would be one example of what this what like, let's say you have a podcast you have a summary what, what would be a prompt that people would give to claude or chat with t to get a better output so if you were doing it with a podcast episode where it was two people speaking you could say this is an example of a podcast episode where I am being interviewed by this person. Can you turn this into a set of questions and answers as if a client of an expert in something was asking the question? Give the answer in a way that the answer stands up on its own and export this in a two column table. And then you could say, and I'm going to tell you which one I am. And so that you know to only use my responses, don't use the interviewer's information in my answers. So there's, the prompts are all on our site on how to do this. No, but, uh, that's what, I mean, I will link that up as well. That's useful for sure, because people need to, that's not just to upload information, but I think that could, for example, if you have really actionable content that you are doing yourself, let's say blog post, like a how-to content, I think for this is a lot easier. If you have a podcast conversation that goes on for like, two hours and you're talking about story and different things it might not be as useful. And as you said, yeah. with two, two people speaking, it's also more difficult for it to like maybe identify should they use all the information or only yours, you know? So yeah, that's for sure. Awesome. And yeah, if, I have a lot of blog content, so I could just take like how to 
host a virtual summit or something like that. And I yeah. would just upload that because it will be like exactly my steps or like a PDF on my, my process. And it will actually be what I wanted it to know. But with a podcast, it's more tricky because you have probably a lot of stuff that you don't want in there sometimes. Awesome. Yeah, but we're going to wrap this up. I think this was really useful and uh, I will link up all the resources and things like that we talked about. But just one more question. If someone is their creator, solopreneur, digital business owner, they want to get started with AI and maybe cloning themselves as, as we've talked about here, what's your number one tip or advice to get started with this? First thing that I would recommend anyone did was write a list of every single process that they do in their business, not just them, but anyone in their team and rank each process on a scale of one to three, where one is easy, two is medium, three is hard. And then I'd start with the easy stuff and I would find tools to automate them. Start with the real basic ones, start with ChatGPT and, and the plugins and start with Latvia and see what you can do. And then another tip off the back of that is to then Find someone who knows about this stuff. So some kind of AI consultant, there are so many out there and just pay them for an hour of their time and show them your business and get their tips on what they could do. Because it's almost like you don't know what you don't know exists. So you can't possibly imagine what might be out there. But if you showed someone your process document, they would say, oh, I know you could do this. And they could write you a script that could save you hours and hours every single week. I would do those two things. And then also when you are experimenting with different tools, I would just remember that if you're not getting good results back, there's a potential that it's not the tool it's you. And so one example of this is there's a, there's a video editing tool called uh, Opus Pro, and you can put in really long videos and it makes shorter ones. But some of the shorter ones that come out aren't very good. But then if you look at it and you think, why is this not very good? It's often because it didn't know what to do with the longer video. And so you can... If you have in mind that you're going to use an AI tool, you can go right back to the start and make sure that how you're putting stuff in is the best format. So when you're starting a story in a podcast episode, start it with a clear start and end it with a clear end and make it really succinct if you know you're going to turn it into a shorter story that you want an, an AI tool to do. So it's like, is it the tool or is it me? And kind of get better at having them in mind when you're creating stuff from the start. Yeah, this is really good advice. I think that's just goes to show like you, <laughs> you upload something to, yeah, I have noticed that as well. I use Opus Clip and, and I think sometimes it doesn't give the best ones from a longer video, but yeah, I didn't know what to do. It's, it's pretty yeah. normal. It's the same if you have an intern on your team and they are yeah. like an employee and they don't know what to do. It's not going to be that great either. But yeah, yeah fi finally, was there a question you wanted me to ask, but I didn't, or do you have any final words of wisdom for anyone watching this? So something that we talked about before we started recording was around just the future of AI. Mm -hmm. And I think what really excites me about AI is that we as humans could have every mundane, boring, rubbish part of our roles that we don't want to do taken care of by AI program. And then it's like, what are we capable of? So how much can we achieve in our businesses or our sports or our families or whatever else? That's the super exciting thing. So I almost want to never lose sight of that. The whole point of this is to stop us from doing boring work so that we can do our art and the stuff that really actually matters. Because I honestly think that AI can either free us or destroy us. And we don't yet know which one it's going to be. But if we can play the game, we can be set up for success no matter what happens. No, definitely. And I will link up some resources. It was a really valuable session. I think really practical what you can do with this, actually. It's just the technology is here. You can, as you said, you can use a tool like Coachbox AI. You can create your clone of yourself pretty easily and then train it, fine tune it. So it's really, you know, great for your audience, for your clients, customers, and all of that. So I link some resources below. Leave your takeaways. Maybe you have an idea already what you're going to do with this. Maybe you're going to create an AI clone of yourself. I think it's really, really valuable for any creator to do this. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now.